plus 3 plus 6 times 50. Hello everyone. Last week, a total lunar eclipse was visible in South and North America and, and in Canada. However, in most of Europe, it was not uh, visible. And the good news, after talking with my friend Diana, also known as my favorite astronaut, if you don't know her channel yet, you should check it out. She has some really good tutorials and also photography reviews. And she told me that she captured the total lunar eclipse with the Dwarf 3 and the Sister S50 and she agreed to send me some data to process and make this video for you. Let's continue now and see the time-lapse videos with the total lunar eclipse captured with the Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope. And we can start before the eclipse. Here we can see the full moon, a short time-lapse video. And soon the penumbra will be visible. Here we can see the penumbra and soon will turn into the partial eclipse when we can see this shadow stronger. So now I think we are already in the partial phase of the eclipse and the follow-up videos will show us the moon getting darker and darker. So unless you change the settings on your Dwarf 3 smart telescope, you won't be able to see details here in the shadows. Also in the key moments of the video, you can go and a couple of minutes try also a live stack and then you'll already have a live stack with the, with the Eclipse captured with the Dwarf 3. And also you can take single 4K videos. We can see now the totality phase will come soon and we'll see also the details in the shadows in the shadow part of the moon and we can see also some stars in the background. Oh, so nice and crisp details with the Dorsey Smart Telescope. I really like the details in the shadows and also the color cast on the moon. And soon I think clouds came and trees. And here we have trees with the lunar eclipse. The moon goes now behind the trees. It's nice, it's artistic, but it's not good for our processing tutorial if we want to stack because these three shadows will make our stacking job impossible or very hard to do. A very good result with the Dwarf 3 Smart Telescope. By the way, affiliate links are available in the video description if you want to order the Dwarf 3. And the same with the Sister S50 Smart Telescope. We have here the full moon capture with the Sister S50 in a video time lapse before the eclipse. And looking now, the eclipse started, we are in the penumbra phase and we can see the shadow rising. Okay, now it seems Sister S50 lost the moon. If you see that it will lose the target because of trees or clouds, you can press that uh, center option button on your phone screen. So Sister S50 will recenter the target and keep it in center again. You can also use the arrow keys to recenter the target if needed. And the partial phase of the moon uh, continues. You can also from time to time take a single raw video of the moon in uh, key moments, like five minutes or 10 minutes that you can process it later on. And here we have more single videos of the moon with the Sister S50. And here we can see the difference. This is a timeless video. You can see the turbulence moving very fast. And soon we'll have the total solar eclipse. Now we can see we have just a little part of the moon bright and some here is overexposed. Some is in total darkness and only a part it has visible details. Can uh, change the settings and get details on the shadow part of the moon. However, the bright one will not have visible details. You can do two captures, one like this with the bright side overexposed and exposed correctly for the dark side. But there is a technique to take two captures of the moon, one that is exposed for the dark side and one for the bright side. And from there, you can do an HDR image. And I'll show you this really soon in another tutorial. We can see now the total lunar eclipse captured with the Sister S50, also very crisp and detailed image with nice color. 
Now it's time to go and process some of these videos into an image by using a technique called stacking. Now it's time to process these video captures with the Sistar S50 and the Dorsey Smart Telescope. And to do this, we will use Auto Stacker to make the stacks from the video files. Because we have MP4, it will not recognize them. So we'll have error. And it also says here to use PIP to convert the files. So press OK. Open PIP. Let's start with the DOS 3 video. I've already imported the video here. So basically you can you'll drag the video file like this. And it will show you also the frames. So we have in this one 585 frames, 4K resolution and also the file size. We have a time-lapse video file. So we can go processing options. We have also a nice feature here, enable object retention. I usually use this for normal captures of the moon, but for the lunar eclipse, I'll just leave this off and go output. And here we'll select the output file that we want. Could be AVI, SER or TIFF. I'll just go with TIFF file for this tutorial and then go do processing. I've already processed it and we have them here. We have 585 frames and let's check a few of them first. Single frames and they look very, very nice. Now we'll also convert the Sistar S50 file and we'll drag one of these two captures of the moon. And now we'll go processing options, uh, output options. We'll leave TIFF and start processing. And we finished processing also the Sistar S50 images. We have them all here. Open Auto Stacker. Select all the images here with Ctrl A. Deselect other folders. So have only the images you want. And reopen Auto Stacker and drag all the images here. We can use also the Open button. Then we'll click on Analyze. And from here on, it's very simple. So we left the first settings as default, planet, dynamic background, uh, automatic. We clicked on analyze and now it's time to place alignment points. So we'll have an uh, accurate stacking of the moon. We'll try first the 104 AP size grid. This is a size model we'll place and we'll try using these settings first. Here we have more options to go, let's say with 5% stack, 10%, and we can try also 20%. So now we'll uh, click stack and wait for the results. If you want the image even sharpened here in auto stacker, we can change the, the blend row. I think we need to go lower, probably 50% and will give us a sharper result. But we will just use this 70% uh, ratio for this tutorial and see what we'll be able to obtain after it will finish processing. And I think it did finish. And we have here our stacks. So let's see. This is the file without sharpening. And this is the file sharpened. You can see we already have nice details here in the Sister S50 image. And let's continue. Let's check the 10%. This is unsharpened. And this is sharpened. So you see at 10%, we had a little bit here of artifact, still visible. Let's check 20%. We see at 20%, this line is almost not visible at all. We'll use for this the 20% stack. Now I do want to process also the those three time lapse and compare with the Sistar S50 Smart Telescope. After it will finish processing, we'll use the same settings as we did with the Sister S50 captures. Auto Stacker finished the first part of the processing and we need now to place the alignment points. We'll uh, use the same uh, size, 104, place AP grid and then we'll select stack. Uh, using a timeless video might give us problems, it seems we're stacking. So for the Total phase of the moon, I think it's better to take a video capture or use the burst mode or do directly a live stacking with the DOS 3. So we'll go and select the other video that has 106 frames. We'll uh, 
go output still will use div and start processing. We'll uh, now hit the stack button. Let's check now the results. At 5%, we notice artifacts in the Blender image. On 10%, no more artifacts, no more big artifacts, but we do have some visible noise on this part of the moon. And let's go 25%. And here it looks much better. Still a little bit noisy here, but much better. And 40%. So if we have only 106 frames, 40% will be like 42 frames or something like that. And with the Sister S50, we had much more frames, 600. So having 120 frame stack compared to it, 10 image stack or 20, it's a big difference. Now let's compare the stacking images of the DOS 3 and Sister S50. And we have here the S50 image and here the DOS 3. It's not bad, it's not bad, but it's less sharpened than the S50. And on the S50, we do have more color saturation. However, we can adjust these images in a software like Adobe Photoshop. So we'll import these two image files in Photoshop and do a little bit of processing. We'll duplicate, right click and convert to smart object. So we'll have saved any adjustments we made and we can undo really easy. We'll go filter, camera raw filter and here we'll increase a little bit the sharpness. The color saturation is already very good here in the Sister S50 image stack. We we'll go add sharpening and also mask a little bit. We do not want to overdo it. So maybe 30% here because it's already a little bit sharpened than the door 3. Just go and change here the play with the tone curve a little bit and lower the highlights a little bit and increase the shadows more and press OK. Now we'll process first the door 3 image. Here we have a 4K file. We'll duplicate the layer, convert to smart object and camera raw filter. And let's go apply previous settings. And this will apply all the settings that I've applied on the S50 stack. However, this was darker. So we need to change here the settings basically, get the highlights back. And also it's a little bit later. It was not in the same time captured. We can increase the contrast a little bit more and play more with the tone class like this and increase the shadows more. So let's see before and now. So we see we do have a reddish color. However, we do have a disadvantage here of stacking only 40 frames instead of uh, 120. So we have three times less frames stacked. I'm not sure if here we did not have some trees because it was captured later or some clouds. Unfortunately, we did have this big advantage of having much less frames and uh, also the moon probably was lower with clouds. Uh, Diana did uh, pay more attention on the Sister S50 and unfortunately here on the door 3 we didn't have the best file to work with. For this important part of the eclipse, the totality phase or other key parts of the partial eclipse, it's good to take separate videos, not time lapse, and make them a little bit longer because if you take only 3 seconds video of 30 frames or 4 seconds, you won't have too many images to work with. Take a, maybe a 5 minutes video or a, at least a couple of minutes video, not only a few seconds. Also, the Dwarf 3 is capable of live stacking and do a short live stack of a couple of minutes. That will be much better quality compared with the compressed videos or uh, time-lapse videos. I do want to have an option also for a raw timeless video with the Dwarf 3 and also in the photo mode or video mode. Also very useful will be a crop mode because raw files will uh, occupy much more space, will uh, be harder to save and uh, to have also fast frame rate, I think a uh, region of interest or crop mode would be very useful for the Dwarf 3 including raw format for the other photography or video modes, including video time-lapse. 
Well, my friends, these were the results. Affiliate links are in the video description. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I hope the video was useful. I want to give big thanks again to Diana and all the channel members. Thanks again for supporting the channel. More data will be available soon for channel members, also galaxies, nebulas. I was working a lot on gathering more data and processing, so it will be available soon. And also more tutorials and reviews. Uh, very soon will be available also an HDR Moon Composite tutorial, so be sure you check it out. Thanks for watching and until next time, clear sky.